This is chapter 19 of the book God dictated to me as he dictated the Torah to Moses and as he dictated the entirety of the Hebrew Bible to one individual or another including all 20 of your prophets from the book of the prophets. Anyone who can hear God is a prophet of God if he talks with him. That's just what a prophet is. It's not somebody who sees the future as was thought by many. I would suppose even Rambam. No, it's just conversing with God. And you can't do that if his spirit hasn't entered you and God is in his spirit. The best example is Ezekiel. Ezekiel says, God was talking to me. At that moment, a spirit entered me. And then I could hear God's words. Ezekiel, get up upon your feet. That's how he communicates with man. He goes to one man at a time. For the most part, the exception was the brother of <clears throat> Moses. But uh, even that was different. It, it wasn't, he didn't have the same experience Moses did. So anyway, the story of Jesus most likely began around 100 years before the story begins with his birth at the beginning of the common era. The first written version of the story is the Gospel of Mark that dates from 66 to 70 common era, about 40 years after the story says Jesus died. This also is the time of the Jewish revolts. There were four of them against Rome and the defeat and expulsion of the Jewish people from the Promised Land. Rome finally won and they lost, by some accounts, hundreds of thousands of the Jewish people, many crucified. This is also the time of the, okay. The knowledge of the Hebrew Bible in a time of illiteracy indicates that the Gospel of Mark was written by rabbis or very learned men in Judaism such as the sect called the Saints. In Jesus' time, there was Pharisees, Sadducees, and the Saints. You never see the Essenes in the New Testament. And um, there's a reason for that, I believe. We'll get to it. Men who decided they needed to write down this story that had been circulating by word of mouth and storytelling, entertainment of the day, people couldn't read, and there, of course, was no television or anything, for about... 140 years with many different versions of his life to be taken to the Gentiles to make money. They were going to squeeze this great story of Jesus that infatuated the Gentiles and I suppose Jewish people too to an extent but uh, knowing it was just a made up story and squeeze it into the Hebrew Bible. Knowing full well it can't be done. But they also know nobody <laughs> had the scrolls except the rich and the elite of society. You know, there's no scroll uh, stores, like bookstores. You couldn't check the veracity of what was being said in this New Testament, the Gospel of Mark, all four Gospels. Their temple, their homes, and country were gone. And it was desperate times for the Jewish people. According to the oral story that most likely began a hundred years before the, before the common era, you know, 
Jesus was born at the beginning of the common era. Died, some say, on or about 30 years old uh, in year 30 of the common era. Book was written approximately 70 of the common era, 40 years after his death in the story. According to the oral story, most likely began 100 years before the common era with a man called the teacher of righteousness. That's his name. Who established a sect of Judaism known as the Saints. The teacher of righteousness who fought with a wicked priest did not like the way the temple was being run. Did not like all the sinning going on in Jerusalem and did not live there and despised riches and the material things of the world, just like Jesus, who also claimed to be the teacher of righteousness. That's what they call the man of Isaiah 53 because in verse 11, God says, My righteous servant makes the many righteous. And that's how they refer to him. They don't refer to him as the suffering servant. Although he is a man of pain, suffering, sorrow, familiar with disease, who got crushes with disease, but gives him wrong life. It did expose him to death, but he does not die. Of course, Jesus did. And under the commentary of Toby a Singer, uh, he thinks the murder of the Holocaust were somehow uh, guilt offerings. And I guess that means guilt uh, Hitler offered him up. He became the righteous servant. I can't tell what he's done. He misinterpreted the Hebrew to English. He says, 5310 says it's a guilt offering and that uh, <laughs> he, <laughs> I, I don't know. You know, uh, and he thinks that the kilns of the death camps are altars of God. And he also thinks that all six million Jews murdered were unblemished. He calls them, he calls them a guilt offering of unblemished rams. Going to Leviticus, he revives. Who does he think he is? He revives God's laws that God did away with. And he added human beings to it. Isn't this guy an anti-missionary? He, he does know that's what the Christians did. They said we had our men's an unblemished lamb and based on the intent or whatever of Leviticus, we believe his sacrifice was a sin offering for all that believe in him, commit to him to be his sa their savior, and believe in the resurrection. That's it. That's all you got to do. Yeah, I believe in Jesus. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I believe he rose from the dead. Okay. Well, your sins are forgiven. You know what I found out when God was teaching me the New Testament? He took me to one of these mega churches in Houston, Christianity, uh, Joel Osteen. And uh, a fellow came up to me and says, you know, if you do accept Jesus as your Savior, uh, all your sins are forgiven. But here's what you probably don't know. All the sins you're going to commit in the future are forgiven too. I thought about it. I said, you mean I can just keep sinning? I can go on a crime spree and it's all forgiven. Doesn't matter. That's right. All you got to do is accept Jesus and believe in the resurrection. Okay. Well, thanks for the information. <laughs> Christian, what are you going to do? The oral storytellers who were diverse and from different backgrounds, strict ethnicity and ability captured the imagination of the crowds with their oral skills and would earn their livelihood from donations of monies and goods. Few could read in a world where illiteracy was restricted to just a few, and this did not begin to change until the Middle Ages. While the earliest forms of written communication date back 
to about 3,500 to 3,000 BCF. I mean, literacy remained for centuries a very restrictive ability closely associated with the exercise of power. Schools in ancient Israel, if any existed, served only the sons of the rich and religious release. Uh, to my knowledge, no school has ever been found in the many, many, many excavations that are done and have been done in Israel. Storytellers in general would be learned men captivating the imagination of the crowds at the gates. The gates to Jerusalem. And the meeting places of Jerusalem with tales that people of a harsh and brutal time wanted to believe in. A time when medical treatment was primitive and life expectancy was 30 to 35 years, averaging those who died at birth to those who died with long life into their 70s and beyond. A time when people believed in mythical gods and gods who were men and making sacrifices to God. Uh, gods, uh, plural, for favor and for safety, healing, long life, crops, and fertility. They always needed numbers. The more numbers you have, the more you could go and take other people's stuff. It's very hard to build your own house and also live with it. It was also very hard to grow your own crops and get to enjoy them. So it was a brutal time, people. Brutal time. The Dead Sea Scrolls are generally thought to have been produced by the Essenes. And the Essenes are a group that protested the way the temple was being run. Many of the Essenes went to the cliffs and caves east of Jerusalem by the Dead Sea, known as Qumran, to prepare the way of the Lord following the commands of the prophet Isaiah. They also had the great scroll of Isaiah, which I think is all 72 chapters. It's right at early 70. Um, and again, their founder, one of the founders, his very name is the teacher of righteousness. They went to Cromwell to get away from the city of the people of Jerusalem and the ways of the religious elite at the temple. And this wasn't all of them. You can still find plenty of them at the Saints Gate and within Jerusalem, but the vast majority of them did go to the case, which is where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. One of the first leaders of the Qumran community was the teacher of righteousness, identified in the Damascus document and the Habakkuk Pesher. A Pesher was a type of commentary in Hebrew, uh, not unlike the Midrash you would find in the Talmud, I suppose commentary, uh, taking a verse and, and breaking it into parts, what does each part mean? And uh, in the Pesher literature, he, the teacher of righteousness, is presented as a founding figure who directly clashed with an opponent called the wicked priest. Of course, Jesus was always at odds with the high priest. And I don't know if he was Pharisee or Sadducee. I can't remember. The man described in Isaiah 53 is often referred to as the teacher of righteousness because of verse 11, where God said, this is God's writing. I often do a little paraphrasing or ad-libbing before I get to it. I just feel you need to know why I'm reading what I'm reading up here. Uh, but when you see me looking down here, this was dictated to me by God himself. His spirit, the angel, who is the angel of his presence, the Holy Spirit, his body is the spirit of God. It's not human form with wings. And God 
is in his spirit. Isaiah 11 should just as well read the spirit of God and God. I live upon and entered the twig of the shoot of the stump of Jesse. Which is a prophetic announcement, by the way. The stump of Jesse. There's a, there's a video on it before this one. You know, Jesus cannot be Messiah. He cannot be Moshe. Because he doesn't come from the stump of Jesse. He comes from the only ancestral tree we know of, the kings of Judah. All succession. King dies, son becomes king. King dies, son becomes king. Okay. This is the first page of the New Testament in the book of Matthew. The whole line, the kings of Judah. Actually, I think it starts back with Adam, but and culminates with the name made up and then into Joseph and then Jesus is born. So he can't be Isaiah 11. You know, uh, the line of the kings was banished when the temple was destroyed and Babylon took Judah uh, to their lands, deported them, so to speak. He said, that's it for your line, Jeconia. That was the last king. And um, I guess the Christians could say, well, God must have left the banishment because he gave us Jesus. Yeah, right, but guess what? He's still not from the stump of Jesse. Don't say Messiah around me. So anyway, I mean, certainly not Isaiah 53. I'll get to that. That's just ridiculous. The man's crushed with disease. Does anybody recall in the Christian New Testament Jesus being even sick? Okay, crushed with disease or a great sickness because that's what they put in their book. They change it. Uh, but exposed to death that's verse 12 exposed to death so whatever the sickness or disease is it's life threatening I, I don't recall any such story about Jesus but give them long life he shall see his children of course Jesus didn't have children he didn't have long life died at 30 Sure, that's an average, but that's not a long life. He, I mean, how did they, how did they even read 53.10? I'm the only person you can find who fulfills 53.10. I had uh, colon cancer. Okay? Uh, first of all, I had gotten shot through the abdomen from about two feet away. Straight through. Through my bladder my intestines, and my colon. Okay, God says it activated dormant cancer cells, and with his power added to that, because some people will say, well, we don't really think traumatic injury causes cancer cells to come on. Nobody's really got a proof on it. It's just hasn't been a big study on it. Uh, but God made sure a tumor started to grow. And I was 18 or 19 years old. Didn't hit me until I was like 43. But anyway, they had to cut me open from stem to stern, way up here, all the way down to my pelvic bone. Then, in uh, for the uh, tumor, they had to go right back through the same cut. And what happens is your intestines from the first cut get kind of sticky and get held together. So it's a difficult operation. But they were able to remove an 8-inch tumor from my colon that had burst through my colon. I had been bleeding internally for over a month. It was brutal. It's suffering. Pain and suffering. You know, God wrote the life of Jesus Christ. Of, <laughs> sorry. Wrote the life of God's righteous servant, Messiah. My life. But really, just to point out all the suffering, beginning with my very birth, when he afflicted me, afflicted by God. Now, Jesus wasn't afflicted by God. And quite frankly, if you gather all the Jews up as one man Israel, you're going to find out none of them have been afflicted. And yet, that's part of 53. And Toby the singer, Michael Skoback, of Jews for Judaism, had no problem saying, this is Isaiah. They got 
Toby's got like 66,000 followers. And they're all convinced 53 is Israel just because he says so. None of them bothers to read how he backs that up. They don't care how he backs it up. Toby has said it. Oh, believe me, I know those words. Shunned, despised, and held with no account because of somebody like Toby, a singer, who believes God is a God of human sacrifice. Giving credence to the beliefs of the Christians. Our unblemished lamb does forgive our sins. It did work in Leviticus, even though that was for unintentional sins. They don't recognize that. It's all sins. I just told you a little story about that. World exaltation of the Jew is something they also teach, in particular, Michael Skoback of Jews for Judaism. And it's his, it is his, the commentary on Isaiah 53, which I don't think is his, but he preaches it a lot, or teaches it. You know what they're doing? They're teaching man's word over God's word. There'll be no world exaltation of the Jews. That's not in the Hebrew Bible. Rambam made it up. He made up the Messianic era, you hear him teaching. There's no Messianic era. All you got to do is read God's covenant of friendship when he returns, as he says he will, in Malachi 3. He says, you won't be the taunts of nations anymore. I'm going to set my temple amongst you. Okay? You'll never be defeated again. And it's first. You'll no longer be the taunts of nations. Does that sound like world exaltation? Can you imagine two billion Christians getting up one day and disavowing Jesus and saying the Jew has been right about God all along? At the same time, can you imagine two billion Muslims disavowing Allah? God as they know him. Allah means God, but it says they know him. And say, oh, it's the Jew who's been right about God all along. Well, if you're going to have world of exaltation, that's step one. And that's just Christians and Muslims. There's a big world out there. You think the Chinese are going to exalt you? Jewish people? I tell most of them know who you are. <laughs> that's one third of the population of the world over there. China or East Asia, I don't know what they call it. The world will speak Hebrew. Moshiach will perfect the world. There'll be no pain in the world. The world will be but to worship God. This is coming from Rambam people, who also made up King Moshiach. He's got two chapters on King, the laws of King Moshiach in his Mishnah Torah. <laughs> God says, my servant David, a shepherd, a teacher, the only one he recognizes today because all rabbis have been dismissed before God, which is in the Hebrew Bible. They don't teach you that one, do they? How are you going to have a Messianic era with no rabbis? <laughs> no, they're not going anywhere. They're not even going to the Jewish heaven. They're not going into the scroll of remembrance unless they do what? Teach the new books. What I'm doing right now, you teach this to your followers instead of the garbage you've been rolling out. World exaltation. Jews weren't made for world exaltation. Would you like the world Jewish people to be Jewish? The entirety. You would, not because you're special. You're special. You're 2% of the population of this world, and you're special. But what if you weren't? What if 98% became Jews? I know you don't care much for people who convert anyway, despite what you may say. <laughs> because it's you know to you that you know it's a different experience to to convert and not having grown up with the stigma of being Jewish, and the way that forms your mind. You know the things that you go through in life form who you are, your person itself. But you're still here, as God says, suffering makes you stronger. And being in his fire refinement, the prophet boot camp, I can tell you, as he told me in the first couple of weeks, uh, Keith, your pain means absolutely nothing to me. 
and there's no low, I won't go to elicit emotions from you because it's going to change you. That turned out to be very true. He doesn't care about my pain. He give you a pain somewhere. It could be anything. He's got all kinds of little tricks he likes to roll out. And you think to yourself, I can't take this for five minutes. I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to spontaneously combust if this continues. And you know what? Two weeks later, you're still saying, I can't take this pain for five more minutes. Yeah, nonstop, 24-7. The year 2022 that just passed, each year has gotten more brutal. I asked him, I said, well, look, I see wounded. I see punished. I see chastisement. I see crushing and bruising, maltreatment. Okay, those are the big six of uh, Isaiah 53 that you see. You just don't know it applies to the fire refinement. The Christians don't know that either because he left it out. Remember, I and the teacher, he recognized me. He doesn't recognize the rabbis anymore. He wants Judaism out of antiquity. In the early Middle Ages and up here to the common era, after the, after the Enlightenment and where we are today with knowledge, information, uh, medicine, and science. I mean, who really believes in the resurrection of the dead? That's supposed to be a sign that I'm here, according to Rambam, that building the temple, if he builds the temple, will say he's Moshe. Eh? Well, what? I'm going to go do it by myself. Yeah, I don't think so. No. And God's wrath in 51 of Isaiah is passed to the Christians. You can read about it. It is. He takes it from the Jewish people and passes it to the Christians and Gentiles in general. Well, that doesn't sound like a world of peace to me. And they don't mention his vengeance. He does. In the era of redemption. Vindication. You know how, you know what the first salvo is? You lift me up high. You say, this is the man of Isaiah 11 and 53, Christians. Can't be your Jesus, and he tells us why. Since our anti-missionaries seem to have fallen off the boat with some of it. Some of it. Can't be, the, can't, can't be Moshe. Can't be Messiah. He's not from the stump of Jesse. Can't be 53. Never crushed with the disease. Exposed to death. He wasn't exposed to death. He died. Exposed means you got real close. Believe me, I've been there four times. I know what that's like. But given long life, you should see his children. And then there's the phrase that he offered himself for guilt. That's where the five refinements hid. He makes the many righteous. The, fir the people, the first six verses combined by quotes, which your Tovia and Michael Skoback apparently have no idea of. Or Shabbat, for that matter. There's quotes there. Use the JPS 1985 version. You don't want the earlier version. They started from scratch from the oldest Hebrew Bible there is. The Leningrad Codex. They started from scratch with, with nothing but linguistic experts. And three rabbis. One from Orthodox, one from Conservative, and one from Reform. And they worked on it for 30 years. They started in 55, published in 85. 30 years. And Tokyo thinks he can tell this group that he knows how to uh, translate Hebrew to English better than them? It says what it says in the JPS, and he's got it. He talks about it, that he would offer himself for guilt. I did. But it's not a vicarious suffering. It's not taking somebody's sins. He was wounded for our sins. Yeah, I was wounded, all right. Yeah, he split my chin open multiple times, broken my hands, cracked my ribs, throwing me to the ground, tripping me while I'm running down a railroad section. Oh, I got pretty outraged about that one. That's what he's looking for. Just maltreatment by God is awful. I mean, it just hurts you to the quick, and you can't stop it. He's absolute power, absolute knowledge, and he is his creation. That to him is the definition.